I'll report more later. We all battle with the questions that are left unanswered in life. Last week we started by looking at the life of Job as one who struggled with the unanswered questions in life. Job's suffering began whenever all of his vast possessions were either lost or stolen or destroyed. Then there was a catastrophic storm that led to the death of his seven sons and three daughters. And after all of that, Job was afflicted with boils from his head to his toe. And when his wife had simply seen enough, she looked him in the eye and she said to Job, curse God and die. But through that entire incident, through, through everything that Job lost in his life, he never lost his integrity, and he never walked away from God. He had questions. To be sure, he had questions. Deep, philosophical <laughs> questions that took him literally to the edge of his faith. But even when he was on the edge, God never abandoned Job. But in the end, in the end, Job came to a point where he could trust God. It wasn't an easy road, but he finally came to a place of trust as he traveled on that road of suffering. And it's here on the road of suffering where Jesus goes on trial. And when the evidence is weighed, People come to one of two conclusions. He is who he says he is, the Son of God, or he is merely a man who offers false hope. Shortly after the devastations of Hurricane Katrina, the Barna and Gallup poll organizations asked Americans a question. They said, if you could ask God one question and get an honest answer, what would you ask God? Well, the answer, I know, is not going to surprise you. And it shouldn't surprise you either to know that the question is also the greatest hurdle that the unconvinced have to go through in their journey to find faith in Christ. The question is very simple. Why is there so much pain and suffering in the world? Why? Why is there so much pain and suffering in the world? You know, it's a universal question. It's asked by people regardless of where they live, what they believe, what their circumstances in life are. Job asked the question, for you and for me, when he asked God, why me? Why this? Why now? But it's fascinating to note that in the book of Job, God doesn't answer the question why. God knows better than to try and answer the question why. Instead, he puts a far more important question to Job. And he asked Job this question. Who am I? Who am I? You see, God knew better than to simply answer directly Job's question of why. Because God understood that Job couldn't begin to comprehend. And, and he knew that deep down inside there were more questions. And so he wanted to get at those deeper questions, the ones that were still hidden in Job's heart. And the real question, the real question was, does God really know what he's doing? Does God really know what he's doing? If we're honest, 
We can all agree that, that this is the real question that we ask when we suffer. Does God know what he's doing? Well, in the 38th chapter of the book of Job, God becomes the master teacher. And what a good teacher understood was that rather than answering the questions, he was going to ask the questions. <clears throat> and God looked at Job, and the verse begins in verse 1, Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. You see, God wants to know if Job can answer the questions that he puts to him. And God then begins to go through a whole litany of questions about the inner workings of creation, all the way from the foundation of the world to how the stars rotate in space, to the very uniqueness of animal life. God goes through two chapters of asking, asking Job those questions. And finally, Job realizes that he does not have the power nor the wisdom, nor the understanding to sit in God's place. And Job gets the message. And Job answered the Lord in, in chapter 40, in verses 4 and 5. Job said to the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. Isn't that good advice? I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice. But I'll say no more. You see, as God turned the tables on Job and began to ask him questions, Job was wise enough to shut up. But though he was silent, God knew that there were still other questions lurking in Job's heart. One of them was, does God really have control over all the circumstances of life? You've had that question, haven't you? It, you know, we, we oftentimes think to ourselves, you know, oh yeah, God might be the, the God of the universe, but there's probably a little spot here and there where God just does not have control. And sometimes we think that if God was really all-powerful and God really cared, He wouldn't let the innocent suffer. Oh, God, because he knew what was really in the depth of Job's heart, asked a different set of questions to Job. And this time, God put Job in a role-playing, decision-making position. Basically, what God said to Job was, Okay, what would you do if you were me? Now, I know that all of us have done this from time to time. We've said, God, I can do this better than you can. Right? We've, we've said to God, I think I know how this should turn out. You see, we like to think that we know better than God in certain circumstances of life. However, through all of these questions that God asked of Job, God was leading Job to a place where Job began to understand who God is. 